are facing challenging, challenging times, and uh, I will take you through the natural steps towards the real, true zero emission transportation. I'll take you through stepwise how we can completely decarbonize the transportation sector. I'll ex um, exemplify this through the three scenarios which I will then use on the Norwegian transportation, road transportation. And I'll try to conclude and provide some recommendations for how to reach these solutions. So everyone knows the battery electric vehicle. It, no, no, nothing special with that. We have to bear in mind, however, that the environmentally footprint of this vehicle always it relies on the electricity from which these batteries are charged. We know that the old conventional internal combustion engine, where we have a gasoline or diesel tank and a combustion engine in front, and the first step to realize a zero emission uh, transportation sector is to hybridize these vehicles, as you know. This has been done by the pioneers in Toyota, making these hybrid electric vehicles uh, now sold in millions already. The second natural step is, of course, to plug in these hybrids, enlarging the, the battery size somewhat, making the range of this, these vehicles somewhere between 20 and 50, 60 kilometers. And again, the footprint of this will rely on the electricity from which you charge the batteries. These plug-in hybrids are now coming into the market. You know the Chevrolet Volt was, uh, was uh, already there last year, Toyota and, and, and Volvo is coming this year with prototypes for the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. The natural third step and last step would be to replace the inefficient internal combustion engine with a fuel cell with a much higher efficiency. In this case, we rep also replace the fuel tank with a hydrogen tank. The fossil fuels are taken out of the transportation completely, and you have a much more efficient and environmentally friendly solution. So this is the third step, introducing the fuel cell hybrid electric vehicle. This vehicle doesn't necessarily have to be a hybrid, because if you pr produce the hydrogen from renewables, it is inherently a zero emission vehicle. Examples, examples of hydrogen uh, vehicles are already on the road. We will see seven of them coming in here today through the zero rally uh, from Östersund to Trondheim. So how can we place these on the, on the timeline and also getting from the current level of 120 grams of carbon uh, oxide per kilometer down to where we, we have to be in some years at low and no uh, zero level. So the first step is naturally the hybrid electric vehicle. It was introduced 15 years ago. We already reduced the footprint to 89 grams through the previous second generation. Plugging in these hybrids will provide another benefit for the environment. Depending on the size of the battery, you can see that you can get down to roughly 40 to 50 grams per kilometer. These cars are now on their way. The last step, the third step, is to replace the internal combustion engine with a fuel cell powered by hydrogen produced by renewable energy. But, as everyone knows, the average kilowatt hour today is not produced from re renewable energy. So depending on where we are here, the benefits of these new vehicles cannot fully be, be exploited unless we decarbonize also the stationary energy production. So this goes for both electricity and hydrogen production. As long as there is fossil fuels sources in use, these vehicles will not be true uh, zero emission vehicles if you look at this in a well-to-wheel perspective. So we can see three steps, but we have to bear in mind that we have to do also something with the stationary energy generation. And then for the battery electric vehicle, it is zero emission, isn't it? Let's take a look at that. The vehicle itself is zero, zero emission, but if and only if the vehicle is charged by electricity from renewable energy. 
If that electricity is based on coal, that vehicle will emit the same amount of CO2 as a de conventional diesel engine. So we have to bear this in mind that we have to work collectively and in a concerted action to make sure that we both decarbonize the, 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 the fuels but also make sure that we reduce the carbon footprint of stationary energy generation. There is a joint view from the car manufacturers. Last year there was a report published concluding that the battery electric vehicle and the range of these vehicles will stay within roughly 200 kilometers, even in a 2050 perspective. This leaves the battery electric vehicle as the perfect optimum city vehicle for small, uh, small vehicle sizes. If you want to reach a large, medium to large scale zero emission solution, you have to go to hydrogen and fuel cells. This joint view is something we have to bear in mind when we then in uh, invest in the various infrastructures for electric vehicles, hybrids, and hydrogen eventually. The Commission of Low Emission was mentioned earlier today. They have an ambition uh, to reduce the emissions from what we call the reference, reference path to what we call the low emission path, reducing the emissions from the Norwegian energy sector and transportation by 80% within 2015. The majority is taken through the reduction of emissions from transportation. 80% of this should be cut, and one third is believed to be cut by introducing biofuels, whereas the other two, and two thirds should be taken by low and zero emission vehicles. So, recently, there was a uh, conclusion and a uh, from, from the Norwegian government, the target has been set to 85 grams per kilometer for an average car in 2020. This is 10 grams um, lower than what the EU is aiming at for the same year. Norway has the, the strictest and the strongest economic incentives for low and zero emission vehicles in the world, leading to Norway having also the world's highest share of these vehicles. In this case, of course, I have to remind you that low and sorry, zero emission vehicles will constitute both battery as well as hybrid, uh, high, uh, hydrogen vehicles. So the fuel cell vehicle is a true zero emission vehicle as long as the hydrogen is, pro is produced from renewable energy. We have uh, more than 80% of the travels in Norway are pretty short. They are shorter than 20 kilometers. And we have a very old car park, meaning that the average car in Norway is more than 10 years old. And we have a high share of diesel. And recently we have, have had some, some uh, challenges when it comes to, to the uh, environmental uh, footprint and, and uh, links to, to cancer when it comes to diesel. So it might be that we will see a lower share of diesel in the future. Norway also have a very low uh, share of public transport. I'll take you briefly through three scenarios. The first scenario is looking at the households where you have two or more cars. If the number two car is replaced by a battery electric vehicle and 30% roughly of the Norwegian households uh, have a third, uh, second car, sorry, second car, and in this case uh, battery electric vehicles are replacing these uh, second small city vehicles, whereas the rest of the vehicles, which were originally con conventional combustion engines, are now replaced by hybrids. Looking at this chart, you can see that al although the share of internal combustion engine vehicles is reduced to 60% in 2020, it takes another seven or eight years because before the car pool has a 60% share. We have to bear in mind, especially the politicians, they have to do something now because it, over the lifetime of a, of a vehicle, which is 19.3 years in Norway, this, this, this delay is really pushing the decision makers currently. Looking at this scenario two, we see now that the hybrid, uh, which we know from the Prius, uh, is now replaced by a plug-in hybrid, making this hybrid are uh, uh, possible to, to charge through the grid. 
In this case, we see that we still have a 30% battery electric vehicle, but you see that the hybrid has an intermittent role, whereas the plug-in hybrid is taking over and has a 70% share of the sales around 2030. The last scenario I'll show you is the introduction of the fuel cell hybrid electric vehicle. You can see that from 2020, we foresee a dramatic increase in the sales of these vehicles, and they will take over and completely replace the hybrids. The internal combustion engine is replaced by a more efficient fuel cell powered by hydrogen. And I would like to show you how this, these three scenarios are taking us down the road when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. On the upper uh, brown curve, you can see business as usual. The scenario one, where you have the second car in every household is a battery electric vehicle, whereas the, the large family car is a hybrid, we will take, that will take us halfway down the emission line. To get more emission reductions, you need the plug-in hybrid, and depending on the size of the battery pack on that plug-in hybrid, you can see that you can benefit and cut some more emissions. So it will short range for the pure battery electric uh, propulsion of the plug-in hybrid will give you some uh, reduction. If you have a bigger battery, the reduction will be comparably higher. It's only the last, the last and the third scenario which takes us down 80%. So the message here is, depending on, again, the source from where you produce hydrogen, it makes a lot of a difference, but we have put uh, down here the two scenarios when natural gas with CCS, carbon capture and storage, or renewable-based hydrogen is uh, uh, taken into this uh, picture. And you can see these solutions are needed to get to the targets we are aiming at. So what is then the role of biofuels? In Norwegian, based on Norwegian forests, biogas and sea tangle, we can produce 2,300 million litres of biofuels. The current consumption of diesel and gasoline for transportation is 7,700 litres. So we have a roughly a potential to cover one-third of the need by biofuels. And these numbers are verified from the University of Life Sciences. Looking at the consumption then, you can see these types of application of biofuels will definitely be the most important because we don't have many other alternatives for trucks, for boats, and for eventually for airborne transportation. And with the consumption of 1,800 million litres for, for ships in Norway and 1,000 litres within the airborne transportation, we use all the biomass, uh, biofuels available for those, uh, those applications. But this is a good use of that because the corresponding reduction in emissions are not that uh, much better with hydrogen or electric uh, propulsion of, of these trucks. That's not just not an option because the batteries will be too heavy. And to fly with batteries, I don't think we were t talking about the continental overseas flights with batteries. So my conclusion is there is no silver bullet. We need all these vehicles. We need the hybrids. We need the plug-in hybrids. We need the fuel cells. We even need the fuel cell hydrogen solution in buses. And let's reserve the biofuels where they can be utilized at the best mm -hmm. in trucks, in boats, and in airplanes, because this is a limited resource. We need to decarbonize fully uh, the transportation sector, and that requires that we even strengthen the economic incentives that we have in place for low and zero emission vehicles today. We need renewable energy to take a higher share of the stationary energy uh, power production. And last but not least, we le need the engagement of politicians to really push this forward and realize the zero emission future transportation. Thank you for your attention.